Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation, an equation with integer solutions. We have x to the fourth power equals 4 to the power x plus 17. And we're going to be solving for x values. And x needs to be an integer, not any real number. We're also going to consider the real case, but only briefly. Okay, so how do you solve an equation like this? Well, Diophantine equations may have infinitely many solutions, in which case you have to prove, or sometimes they don't have any solutions, which we usually use modular arithmetic for to uh, prove that, because let's say an equation is impossible, any mod like mod 2, mod 3, mod 5, then it can't be true for any integers. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have x to the fourth power, which is an even power, and then we have 4 to the power x, which is an even base. And we have 17, which is a prime number, a really good combo. So let's go ahead and start by putting the variables or the x's on the same side. Let's subtract 4 to the power x from both sides. And now we're going to consider the following. Because x to the fourth is an even power, we can write it as x to the second power to the second power by using superpower property. And 4 is 2 squared, so we can write it as 2 to the second to the power x, and that is equal to 17. Now, why is it significant like that 17 is a prime number? Because we use factoring sometimes to solve Diophantine equations. By the way, I made a video about Diophantine equations. You can go ahead and check it out. If I remember, I will try to add the link or someone else can do it for me. That would be awesome. So notice that 2 to the power 2 to the power x is 2 to the power 2x, which can be written as 2 to the power x squared. In other words, this expression is a difference of two squares. And that's awesome. Difference of two squares is one of the most important things in math, I would say, especially for competition level math. Uh, another one would be probably Pythagorean theorem. There's quite a few formulas you need to know, but these two, I think, are super duper important. And Difference of two squares comes up a lot in algebra and other places, and you almost always use it. You even use it in calculus. Let's say you're evaluating limits, right? Uh, that comes in handy. So how does that work? A squared minus B squared equals A plus B multiplied by A minus B. For those of you who are not familiar with difference of two squares, that's what it is. I know some people are going to be mad because like, why are you going over the simple stuff? Because not everybody knows it. Okay, now let's go ahead and factor it accordingly. So this will become x squared plus 2 to the power x times x squared minus 2 to the power x. In this case, this is my a and this is my b. And now this is equal to 17. Now, 17 is a prime number, so it can only be factored so much, right? For example, 17 times 1 is one way to do it. 1 times 17 is another way to do it. Negative 1 times negative 7. So there are four ways to do it, basically, right? Including the negatives. So this can be, let's say this can be a 17, this can be a 1, or the other way around. We can also consider this and this. That's it, right? Four cases, easy to go through. Here's the thing. This is a positive sum because x is an integer, right? Wait a minute, can x not be a negative integer? Here's the problem. If x is negative integer, then we're going to have like a fraction from here. And then when we square it, let's say x is equal to negative 2, okay? Negative 2 squared is 4 plus 2 to the power of negative 4. That would be 4 plus 1 over 16, which is, you know, uh, 4 point something, yeah? Uh, so that's not going to be an integer. There's no way it can work, right? Is, can there be a solution? Well, we're going to look at the real case later. So let's go ahead and stick to the integer cases right now. So those are the only cases that we have because 17 can only be factored into those. Now when, so x squared plus 2 to the power x, in other words, cannot be negative 17 or negative 1. So these cases are dismissed. Case dismissed. Okay, what about the other ones? For example, if x squared plus 2x, 2 to the power x is 17, and x squared minus 2 to the power x is equal to 1. By the way, this gives you a really nice system. You don't even have to guess and check. You can just solve it. This gives us 2x squared equals 18 and x squared equals 9. 
This gives us two integer solutions, as you should know, x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 3. But here's the thing. If you subtract these equations, you will get 2 times 2 to the x equals 16, which is 2 to the x equals 8, which means x is equal to 3. So when you look at the intersection, you only get one solution. This obviously does not work. As I said earlier, if you replace x with a negative number, you'll get a fraction and then a negative integer squared is an integer. Their sum will never be an integer. Get the idea? So x can only be 3 from here. What about the other case? Let's go ahead and take a look. So what happens if x squared plus 2 to the x is 1 and x squared minus 2 to the x is 17? This seems to work temporarily, right? If you add these up, you get 2x squared equals 18 and x squared equals 9 again, which means x is 3 or negative 3, but you probably know negative 3 would not work. So does x equal 3 work? That's a good question, and the answer is no, because if x is 3, from here we get 9 plus 2 to the x equals 1, and from here you get 2 to the x equals negative 8. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. We don't have solutions. Unless you're looking for complex solutions, which we're not looking for because this channel is not about complex numbers. I have another channel called A plus BI, which is all about complex numbers. If you're interested, go ahead and check it out. Even if you're not interested, still check it out because you might learn something interesting. So anyways, x equals 3 seems to be the only solution. But if you're looking for complex solutions, you can go ahead and do so by complexifying the negative 8. You got to remember that negative 1 can be written as e to the power i pi. Of course, you can consider multiple of 2 pi, so on and so forth. There is a long story. That's why I'm not going to get into that right now, but I'll refer you to my other channel. So x equals 3 seems to be the only solution to this equation, the only integer solution. Are there any other solutions that are not integers, like maybe solutions that are real? That's a really good question, a really good question. And um, the answer is, we'll see, okay? But if you look at this equation, like, could you solve this analytically? Like, is there a way to solve it without guess and check and just redo the math? I don't think so. I mean, in some cases, we're able to, let's say, suppose I had the following, okay? Let's just say this was my equation. I could solve it using Lambert's W function. Why? Because it just fits the criteria. I can write this as e to the power ln 4 and then take the 4 through top both sides and work with the numbers and I can bring it into a form like this and then apply Lambert's W and I'll get that. Really quick like Lambert's W in 10 seconds, okay? Cool, but that's not the case. With the plus sign, things are tricky. Uh, if you had uh, the uh, like x and ln x, yes, you could do e to the power of that, that would work, but there's no way, as far as I know, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no way you can turn it into this form. Therefore, we're going to have to do, rely on something else. What is it? Numerical methods, right? Newton wraps and whatever, whatever it's called. I'm not really interested in numerical analysis. I don't like it for some reason because it doesn't give you the exact answer, so what's the point, right? So anyways, let's go ahead and check out something real quick, okay? So the graph of these two functions, ta-da, they intersect at three points, one of which is x equals 3. Of course, that's the only integer solution. The others aren't integers, but very interesting curves. Obviously, the curvatures are different. x to the fourth is like kind of real wide first and then goes up real quick because it grows like crazy. Uh, between 0 and 1, it's very slow. But then if x is greater than 1, x to the fourth is going to just shoot up and obviously it'll intersect more than once. But interestingly, because the other one is exponential, it's not like symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, therefore we only get three intersection points, and these are the values approximately thanks to Wolfram Alpha. By the way, Wolfram Alpha is not a sponsor, but I just wanted to mention that real quick, because that's where I got most of my results from. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.